friends, today we are going to do one of my all-time favorite movies, the story of Edward Bloom. We're going to Spectre from Big Fish, a Tim Burton classic. I'm really, really excited and I hope you are too. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. It's on private property, but they have the phone number there, I'm told. This is a real bucket lister for me. I really, really love this movie. It's one of the few things that reminds me that people still fall in love in real life. And even though it's just a movie, I guess a great movie makes you feel like it's real, so. Okay, I was looking for that. We're close. There it is. There's that trespassing gate. And apparently you just call and you pay $3 in cash and uh, they give you the code to get to go over there. I'm so excited. Kind of cool you can even camp here and spend the night. Home of big fish. And don't try and stiff them either. They got a camera in here. See? Grab one of these envelopes, put your money in, and drop it. Good thing I checked in advance to know about this so I could stop and get ones. So people come out here and fish and camp on the grounds of Spectre? The most beautiful place in Alabama? Now we gotta take the bridge across. This is the same bridge that Will takes when he's coming back to find out what's up with that deed that he saw his dad Edward's name on with Jenny. And he comes out here and thinks that his dad was cheating on his mom, but he finds out something else. Well, there's a sign telling us to go that away. Here we are. Welcome to the mystical town of Spectre from Tim Burton's 2003 movie, Big Fish, based on Daniel Wallace's novel. The movie set includes the town of Spectre and the adjoining acre to your right, which is the dark forest. All but two artificial forest trees are removed for safety reasons. The film's theme is one of reconciliation between a dying father, Edward Bloom, and his son, Will Bloom, who seeks to know truth from fiction in his father's grand tales. Now this kind of tells you how he ends up here the first time. A young Edward survives the dark forest, steps through the two trees that remain today, and discovers a magical and tranquil town where everyone goes without shoes. Now that's what it looked like when he first arrives. There's no road or anything going through town, and it says here that the last scene filmed was young Edward's return to Spectre where he finds the town deteriorated and up for auction. To make the town look dilapidated, the film crew sandblasted the paint on the buildings and removed the green grass from the street. The town was left in this condition when filming wrapped. And then it says Jenny's house is on the opposite side of the island. So we'll go check that out as well. So here's our incredible cast. Albert Finney, right before he passed. Ewan McGregor, Billy Crudup, Helena Bonham Carter, Haley Ann Nelson plays the young Jenny and she plays not only the older Jenny, but also the witch with the glass eye. I love this movie and this scene is so great because basically what happens in the movie is that Big Fish ref refers to Edward. Edward Bloom is our Big Fish. You see, Edward Bloom is a man that knows even from the time he's a little boy that he's meant for bigger things and that he finds out when he's a kid that if you put a goldfish in a small bowl or a double size bowl, then the fish would get double the size. If you put in a triple size, quadruple the size bowl, it would get even bigger. And so he realized that in a big world, a man could be a big fish. And Edward always wanted to be that big fish. Now the story basically centers around him and his son, Will. And Will grows up always hearing these fantastical stories that his father tells, always assuming after time that they're all fake, they're all lies, including a story that his dad always tells about the day of his birth where he captures the big fish using his gold wedding ring, saying that hundreds of dollars worth of lures couldn't catch this fish, but the sparkle of a golden ring was what he captured it with the day that his son was born. And he used that analogy also when his son's going to get married, saying that he found that that was just like finding a great wife, was that in order to capture her, you had to have a shiny, glistening, golden ring to give her. So the movie is basically that um, Will and his dad don't get along anymore because he thinks everything his dad has told him is a fabricated, embellished story. And throughout the movie, we find out that maybe they are and maybe they aren't. But it's the beauty in his storytelling that makes him who he is. 
So here's where the greatest part of the movie starts, I think. So basically at the time that Edward decides to leave his hometown because it's just too small of a life for him, they have a problem with a giant who lives in the area and who's eating their animals. And so they send Edward as a sacrifice and Edward finds out when he goes to meet the giant that the giant isn't this uh, horrendous beast that wants to eat people. He's just got a big appetite because he's huge. And Edward says, well, maybe the town is too small for you. Maybe you need to go where the buildings are bigger than you and says, and I'll go with you. And at first the giant thinks that it's just Edward trying to lose him, to get rid of him. But Edward says, I do want to get rid of you, but I want to go with you. So they set out on this trail together and they get to a fork in the road and there's a sign at the fork that says, do not go this way, dangerous. And it has all these signs. But Edward says, you know, I knew of a man that once took this road. Nobody ever saw him again, but I learned when I was young and then when I was in school that sometimes the hardest path that you take leads to the greatest rewards on the end. So he goes through this jumping spider forest and um, all these crazy adventures through this forest. And as he comes out the side, he comes out into Spectre through these trees. So as Edward Bloom finds his greatest treasure, which is here, other than his wife, he comes into Spectre and sees these shoes hanging from this rope because he finds out that this is a, a wonderland of a community that people had only heard about, never seen, because there weren't roads that came out here. So Edward comes here and when he gets here, the whole town is already expecting him, but they say you're early. We weren't expecting you yet. Look at this. They left it exactly, I mean, they just left it all here. That's amazing. So Edward kind of roams around this town and this is literally a wonderland. It's like people doing nothing but smiling and enjoying the weather and enjoying each other's company. But Edward has that feeling of, I'm a big fish. And even when he leaves, a story that he tells throughout the movie is that when he's a kid, there was a witch that everyone was afraid of that had a glass eye. And so he and his friends go out and his friends challenge him to, don't worry, we will go through some of these houses. I'm just gonna tell you the story through here. His friends challenge him to go get the glass eye. So he goes and he actually meets the witch. And when she shows the glass eye, you can see your death in her eye. But he actually develops a friendship with her and when he leaves the town, they're throwing a parade for him and the giant to leave. And she calls him over and she says, remember, a big fish is only a big fish because it's never caught. Which is an interesting analogy for great people in the world is that sometimes they're also the loneliest because something in the world is just pulling them into to doing extraordinary things or greater things and they just can't have anything else. They can't be tied down into a, um, I guess a, what would be considered a, a smaller life for them. And this movie really explores it. So even though he loves everything here and he loves the people, he says, I have to leave. I have a whole life to live before I want to come back here. And they said, but nobody's ever left Spectre. And he leaves and that actually inspires the poet here to leave who eventually ends up giving Edward, and it's played by Steve Buscemi, which is just a great actor. They end up robbing a bank together and he ends up giving Edward money that he ends up buying his house for his wife. Now his wife, that's an interesting person to bring up because it's love at first sight. He gets the giant a job at the circus. Oh, I heard there were a lot of goats on the premises and I just saw one running around in there. Hi buddies. What's up guys? I know, hi. All right, I won't bug you. But um, yeah, so the, uh, the giant gets a job and he sees the woman of his dreams. And that's partially why he feels that this is not the time for him to be here because he has so much more to find in life, including the woman of his dreams. So he takes a job at the circus telling them, I'll work for free, but every month tell me one thing about her. And finally after three years of him working, doing this every month, working for Danny DeVito, he knows her name. He knows where she's going to school and he goes and finds her and finds out that his friend from when he was a kid is engaged to her and they've always been rivals. And the friend ends up beating up Edward after Edward promises the girl that he won't fight back. And she says, after seeing Edward not fight back and seeing the guy take advantage, she says that she doesn't even know Edward, but she would rather be with him than her fiance any day. And they end up falling in love. Love at first sight and Edward tells her, 
I came to marry you. So right here, when it was all grass, this is where they would have had like the hoedown. The big square dance and everything, and they, they film it very creepily where like, you always see Edward's face or Mr. Beeman's face, played by Loudon Wainwright, and they're kind of swinging around in like a dizzy fashion. So cool to see. <laughs> wow. And I believe it's either this house or this house that they have all those, those um, where he's eating the pie with Steve Buscemi and, and Beeman because you see him eventually come like running out of here and go running up this street. Wow, look at this. This is completely falling apart now. I often wonder how long they'll keep this around. That was kind of why I was so excited. Originally, the plan today was to go to the F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda house in Montgomery, but they last minute put online that it's closed for a few days to get ready for Gatsby exhibit. So I said, wait a minute, where is the big fish town? I thought it was out this way. So that's why we're here today. And I'm really happy we're here. So throughout the movie, Edward basically tells us about all these fantastical stories that happen. And, um, his son never believes any of them, and in fact calls him out on being a fraud, and that's why they end up not talking for so long. But in the beautiful moments of this movie, you know, I had told you that he saw his death in the witch's eye, and so every time they think when he has cancer he's gonna die, he says, no, this isn't how I go. It's much more magical, it's much more fantastical. And so, in a really, really beautiful moment when he's getting ready to die, he says to his son, they're alone in the hospital. And I don't think this is ruining the movie by telling you. And he just says, get me out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the river. And he's like, dad, you, we, we can't get you out of here. And he goes, get me out of here. Tell me the story. And he says, the story. And he says, the story of how I die. And his son says, dad, you never told me that story. And he says, you know the story. And what he means is the story of how Edward dies is that his son tells the embellished fantastical story of what ends up happening to Edward. And it's amazing. You should see it. You should absolutely see it. It's, uh, it's magical. Very, very magical. Very Tim Burton. Okay, there's our answer. This one's labeled. It's labeled the mayor's house. And I'm guessing that they purposely removed the, um, the stairs and everything because they they're you know it's probably not safe anymore there are signs you know I showed you already that said it's not safe but oh we do see them out on this porch though yep we see them sitting out on this porch originally which is really cool to see that would have been Beeman's house and his lovely wife this is also where he meets Jenny and Jenny while he's eating that pie, I'm gonna go in anyway, who cares? You only live once. So they would have filmed that in here. And um, yeah, because Edward walks out of that door while they're eating the pie at this table and everything, Steve Buscemi's got that goofy smile on his face. <laughs> um, Jenny crawls under the table and takes Edward's shoes off and runs out the, the door with Edward's shoes. Look, there's part of the, the set. You can see how they would have probably perched cameras and stuff up there. It smells like goat poop in here if you were wondering. That's cool. God, if you haven't seen this movie, go see it today. Go watch it today. I think it's even on Netflix, or at least it used to be. It's a piece of canvas. Yeah, so he comes running out of here, running down the steps, and chases after her down the main road, the only road, but it wasn't road then, it was all grass. Somebody signed the post here, Cheryl Big Fish Edwards. You can tell somebody's stolen the number off of here. And the fixtures, I'm surprised the shutters are still here. So I mentioned on our drive out here that there's a part where his son, Will, is looking through all the old records as his dad's about to die and he see something that looks suspicious so he comes out to Spectre knowing this would have been on his dad's sales route. His dad eventually becomes a traveling salesman and when he comes out here he goes to Jenny's house, a grown-up Jenny, and she tells him the story of why what his father had done and what she says is amazing. She says your father eventually through his travels when they opened up a road 
that brought everyone to Spectre, it just destroyed the town. And so when he comes back, he sees that everything, every single thing in the town is closed. It's boarded up and it's set to be sold. So he goes to all of his friends that he's made over time and borrows money. He goes to the circus owner, Danny DeVito, and he goes to Steve Buscemi, the uh, poet laureate who then becomes like a tycoon and he gets them to give him the money to create a trust and what the trust will do is it will allow him to bring the city back to the way it was with the um, and what he does is people that own property he goes to them and says it will still be yours you don't have to leave you'll still own it but it'll be in my name and everyone agrees to it because they believe in him except for young Jenny. Well, an older Jenny who doesn't want to sell it, she finds out, or Will finds out that that's what his dad had been doing here, was, look at that, was trying to bring the town back to life. And originally when Will buys everything, he thinks he owns everything in town, but there's a clause that says you have to own every single thing to be able to do anything. And she is the last one to hold out and says, straight up, if nothing will change except for me signing this paper and giving it to you, then I just assume nothing change and then it won't change. So she says, no, I'm not going to do it. But they, he... Her house is slanted, <laughs> like it's so disheveled and slanted. He brings the giant back to literally push it and straighten it out, and he repairs her home for her, even though she's already said she's not gonna sell it. And because of that, she ends up signing the paper and falling in love with him, and when she tries to make a move on Edward, you see that he truly loves his wife and that he says, she's the only woman for me, and so Jenny has to hold this love for Edward for the rest of her life for a man that she can never have. But he holds good to his word and he brings the entire town of Spectre back and the only difference when he brings it back is that there's now the road going through it. Now that one obviously might be a little too unsafe to uh, go wandering through but we'll see. Let's go in here. They don't really go in these buildings other than the house, really. I mean, you don't really see them film much, so that's why there's nothing inside once you get in there. This is one of those movies that if you, uh, if you like a great love story, like a great fantastical love story, this is like, this is perfect. And it's just a well done story. Tim Burton really knocks it out of the park, and I'm I like a lot of his stuff, but I would not call myself a Tim Burton fanatic by any means. That was the goat's house. That's where they were hanging. And probably in here too, by the droppings on the porch. And I see some cages in there, so. I ain't afraid of no goats. Da 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 Wrong movie. So when Edward leaves, we do see this shot. Oh, there's all the goats. What's up, guys? So when Edward decides to leave the town for the first time, because he says, you know, he's got a lot more to do before he comes back, and he says, even you said that I'm here early, he goes back through the forest through those trees. And had I known, I would have brought an extra pair of shoes to throw up there. I just, I didn't know I was going to come to this. wonder if his original shoes are still up there. I doubt it. This is truly movie bucket list stuff for me. Getting to see Spectre, getting to see that, and the sign, I, I love this. Go watch Big Fish if you haven't seen it. The rain's starting to come down, but we're not done, so let's go across the island to where Jenny's house was. I just took a selfie and those guys photo bombed me. You can definitely tell it's a fake tree. Look at all the pipes and stuff that kind of, so they could make it exactly the way they wanted to, look exactly the way they wanted. Just remember Edward Bloom, the biggest fish in the river only gets that way by never being caught. Oh, they were all looking for shelter. That's what they were photobombing me for. Look, they're on the mayor's porch. Huh. You see the church in the background of the movie, but they don't really use it. And I wonder if that's where they filmed the woman he sees in the river, the naked woman he sees in the river, and the, uh, well, the story that his son tells at the end scene. 
There's just a circular path that goes all the way around the island, so I figure if we take it, we can't miss the house wherever it's been built. Getting a little bit of scenery as well. Well, crap, that's all that's left. It says, this is one of the many sites on Jackson Lake Island Hollywood director Tim Burton used to film the scenes for his Academy Award and Golden Globe nominated Big Fish. These are the original columns from Jenny's house, which once stood on the pilings along the water's edge. That makes sense. Over the years and a few floods, the house, which was falling down and unsafe, was removed. That's sad. As Will Bloom seeks to understand the many tales told by his dying father, Edward Bloom, he visits an older Jenny who tells Will his father rescued the bankrupt town of Spectre by purchasing it at an auction and restoring it to its original beauty. Carl the Giant helps Edward repair Jenny's dilapidated house by pushing it back to an upright position. Tim Burton had the house built on a hinge system in order to allow the structural movement during the filming. And there you can see what it looked like when it was all slanted and literally the giant is over here and he just pushes it back to standing up still. <laughs> and so there's a, uh, a picture right up here of Will visiting Jenny and that's when she's telling the story of what great things Will's father did in Spectre. That's kind of one of the first moments where you're starting to think, wait a minute, maybe some of these stories have a bit of truth to them. Wow, yeah, you can still see the hinges up there. That's kind of interesting, look at that. This one's folded over. That's really neat, that's really neat. I'm gonna touch that. I know, I'm stupid, but I love this movie. I just love seeing this kind of stuff. Yeah, you can definitely tell the water levels have changed because look at where the tree line is going along the, the river. I think this is the Alabama River. So the house would have been right here. Oh yeah, and even look at the base. You can see where there's a section cut out of the, uh, the base on all of these, probably for whatever was helping that hinge system because every single one of them has them. There are the holes where the hinges would have been. I could probably say it a thousand times and definitely mean it a thousand times more. This movie is a fantastic classic. It's a little over two hours, but go watch it. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it in a long time, go watch it. This is what movies should be. It's got a great story, a great concept, great acting from beginning to end. There's not a slow part. It's just phenomenal. And if you can get out here, there's many ways you can find, but little hint, look up Cyprus the street cypress that will take you here to Jackson Lake to come see Spectre for yourself. Get your own photos while it's still here. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow from, well, here, Montgomery, Alabama. Have a great night. Goodbye.